Greetings alchemists, welcome to another Antler Studios devlog. This week you've got me, Harry, lead programmer, and today I'll be running over the features of our latest animal in the game, the spider, talking about its mechanics and explaining a little about how we use behaviour trees in UE4 to create it. We wanted spiders in the game to work more like a dangerous hazard rather than an enemy to be defeated, so as to make them feel more dangerous and add a level of tension to the problem solving that the player needs to do in order to progress. So for that reason, the first thing you should know about the spiders of Dakrama is that you can't kill them, and they can very much kill you. Luckily for Edric, he does have some recourse, namely the Solifidation Tonic, a powerful and dazzlingly useful potion, particularly useful when surrounded by murderous spiders. Like our Lunification Tonic, the Solifidation Tonic imbues Elpin with alchemic power and transforms him into a state we call Sun Elpin. Expanding Elpin in Sun Mode will create a bright radius of light, which will enthrall and captivate any nearby spiders. We are very much inspired by the scene involving the Vial of Caladriel and Shelob from Lord of the Rings, except instead of scaring the spiders away with a bottle of starlight, we're attracting them towards a shiny robot. Shiny, shiny, won't you be mine? Oh yes, and I may have forgot to mention that spiders do have Cockney accents, naturally. Sun Elpin also burns through spider webs, which are an important tool we use to create puzzles with physics objects and pressure plates. As a player, you can expect to be challenged to burn webs at the right moment in order to clear paths for boulders and other similar timing based challenges, all the while trying not to get eaten alive. The spider's behaviour is fairly straightforward. We use an enumerator to delineate a handful of states, which are used as conditions in the spider's behaviour tree to run specific behaviours. The most notable of these are patrolling, hunting, and attacking. Oi, what you playing at? I'm trying to eat you here. Patrolling is the spider's default state. It will randomly select from a bunch of predetermined objects to go check up on. Spiders always like to keep stock of their stashes. We use a pawn sensing component to trigger a new state if Edric enters the spider's field of vision or gets too close. At this point, the spider will start closing in and hopefully hurling some abuse at our duo. When in range, the spider will transition to attacking and lunge forward in an attempt to pin Edric to the floor in order to apply a lethal injection. When attacking, the spider waits for a brief period before launching itself at Edric. In order to achieve this, we use a simple wait node in the behavior tree and then have a custom behavior node, which just runs the launch character function in the direction of Edric. When the spider is chasing Edric, we use something called a behaviour tree service to perform a line trace between the spider and Edric. A behaviour tree service is basically a bunch of code that runs at a given interval uh, on certain nodes in a behaviour tree. In our, So whenever the spider is chasing Edric down, we basically run a line of code which just does a line trace between the spider and Edric. If this line trace returns a hit, we assume that this... Uh, if this line trace returns a hit, we assume the player's broken line of sight between Edric and the spider, and so the spider's behavior will change. It will just go to investigate the last lone location, wait for a bit, and then if it can't pick up Edric again after that, it will go back to patrolling. It's pretty simple behavior for now, but it's sufficient for us to start testing and see how spiders feel. And that's pretty much the spider's behavior for now. Like I said, pretty simple, but enough to get started with. If you like the look of these spiders, we have some good news. The mesh and the animations are actually... If you like the look of this spider, we have some good news. We're actually working off a store-bought asset for this one. So both the mesh and animations are available to the public. They were created by the very talented Enhanced Studios and a link to them is in the description of this video. And that's pretty much everything for this week. Thank you for joining me and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you didn't and wishlist Project Grover on Steam regardless. Until next time.